Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? So I wanted to bring you a very quick video on something I saw in Reddit just yesterday. And I find it interesting because we have a user that has essentially reverse engineered some of the app features and it's exposed some really interesting information that maybe maybe we could keep in the back of our minds as we, you know, over the next few weeks, we see some of these updates maybe come through or months at the rate Tesla has been going. So as we know, um, there are are some app changes coming, if not just for the FSD subscription, but for things like Tesla insurance, which we've heard about for a while now. Um, well, we know Tesla insurance is a thing, at least in California, but as far as any way to manage your information or actually get some interesting feedback from your driving, hasn't yet been a thing for Tesla. So that is something that apparently is coming. So as this user says, Tesla's implementing insurance directly into the app and it'll have its own section for you to view your insurance details. Big win, that's awesome, I love that. I mean, I'm not in California, so I wouldn't be able to use this, but it sounds great to me. The one part, well, the biggest part about all of this is the safety rating section of the app. So this is an image that you can see here. It doesn't really show you much, but it just shows you a safety rating section that this person seems to have has uh, reverse engineered out of the app. The thing that some people may not like about this is that this is gonna track your driving. We've seen ads from insurance companies talking about how you get discounts from your driving or you know, based on your driving habits. But this is a whole nother level. And let's, let's take a look at this here. So the safety rating page will track your vehicle and it's linked directly to your insurance. It'll show you the number of hours driven, how often you use autopilot, ABS events, forward collision warnings, auto steer strikeouts, auto steer strikeouts. Does that mean when you interrupt it? I'm not quite sure what that means. Accelerator variance, and many other metrics, both on a per trip and monthly basis, which you'll be able to see in a neat graphical interfa interface. You're given a pass or a fail rating, although it's unclear what that rating will be visible to, the, if that rating will be visible to the end user. And from what this person can tell, it's exclusive to hardware two and above software version 2021.4.12 is required. All right, so lots of qualifications that are needed to even get your hands on this kind of thing. No one can get their hands on this right now, as far as I know. But what they're showing there is a lot of a lot of data coming out of your driving, going right to your insurance rating, and you're gonna end up coming out of your pocket if you become an aggressive driver or opposite if you're a good driver and a mellow driver. So there's gonna be a new simulator section of Tesla under Tesla insurance in the app. It's going to allow you to adjust factors like the ones that you see here below and see how they impact your safety rating. The estimated premium is calculated on a ver per vehicle basis using the coverages and limits of your current policy. Yeah, so these are really intrusive factors here. ABS activation, the number of times ABS is activated, hours driven, the average daily drive time, forced autopilot disengagement, so the number of times autopilot is disabled due to ignored alerts, forward collision warnings, unsafe follow time, so the portion of time spent at an unsafe follow distance when you're tailgating, um, intensity of acceleration and braking, speed variance, that's what we talked about above, Speed variance is if you're in chill mode, if you're in standard mode, or if you've got another mode because you have the acceleration boost, perhaps. Um, how much time do you spend in each of those, I'm assuming, is going to be part of this, but definitely your aggressiveness on the pedal. For most of us, especially in the first few months, we're really aggressive on the pedal. I mean, why not? Uh, but they're going to start measuring your insurance based on how aggressive you are and how much you accelerate and the speed at which you accelerate to. So these performance indicators are based on an average for that factor. The more factors you get into the green, the more you'll save on your premium. Your actual premium will not change more than 50% in a month based on your driving behavior. This is really in-depth information. I don't know how this person pulled this, so I would, again, take this information with a grain of salt. This is just to give us some directional information here. This is very specific, some of these ways that Tesla is gonna engage with drivers. So all of these factors together are going to weigh into your premium. Um, it's going to go on your record. So this is really interesting stuff. All right. And we've got a section on the FSD subscription. We have heard this FSD subscription is coming. We know how much it costs right now in a flat fee for the, essentially you get it for your entire time as a Tesla owner of that vehicle. And remember, it doesn't transfer to other vehicles. So that's a big 
selling point of a subscription in that case. So you don't have to put up that front amount of 10K right now into your vehicle and lose it if you get a new one. Anyway, so the subscription has, there's been significantly more work and has been completed around in-app subscriptions. Looks very near completion with the cart system now finished off and they've added some bits around the payment processor. This looks very close to release with finishing touches now being applied. So this seems like it might be closer to release than any of the insurance functionality above. But what I find interesting is just like when you do get this speed bump or you get the um, the added acceleration, you'll be able to refund the subscription within a select time frame, probably 48 hours. There'll be a weekend mode and a travel mode. No idea what that is. This might tie into some other parts here and some of these other bullets that we can take a look at. I'm gonna skip this session section here about coupon codes, but let's talk about the billing periods really quick. So it looks like you can set up billing periods and have a separate report from another source you'll be able to subscribe to for SF FSD for much longer and shorter periods. There will be a nice subscriptions page that lets you toggle auto renewal, updating billing address details, download PDF invoices, that's great too. So you have the ability to download invoices and that's interesting because you're going to need that if you're using it again, if it's a work situation, if your company's paying for it, or maybe there is a, a, it's a loaner car. There's something in the code that this person found around spending limits to your card. If Tesla was going to plan on charging per mile basis for FST, and this might be why that that is as part of your spending limits because if you're charging per mile maybe you know you've got a 400 mile trip coming up you only want that amount of fsd and they make a good point here this is a complete guess but why would they have spending limits then what's the point of that there must be some rolling charging happening something that's automated or happens consistently frequently so it would require spending limits so I was hoping this app update here might have been something beyond just Tesla insurance because that is a very small part of the Tesla ownership being just in California. Maybe this will be a launching pad to other updates. Maybe some of this will get us a little bit closer to V11, which I've been talking about. We've been talking about as a community for a long time where we just want it, right? I want it. Um, I don't care so much, like I said, about the uh, app updates for Tesla insurance. The simulator part of it is creepy. It is really creepy. I don't want Tesla knowing how often I floor it because I'm always flooring it safely, of course. So the FSD part is cool. That's great for people that are beta testing FSD that have either bought it um, or are planning on buying it or planning on an, thinking about another way to buy it. Subscription model is always a nice way to do it. I am very curious though, if it's going to be a per mile, if it's going to be a per month, um, a daily thing, how often we can toggle this on and off. That's gonna be the key. That I might use sometimes if I have a long trip coming up. Other than that, it looks like this person's gonna have some more details coming soon. Um, I'm going to be watching them for sure, track and see what they post. This is really interesting. Uh, there's always something happening, it seems like, if not just from uh, Twitter user Green the Only. This, is, this person's great because they're constantly finding new things in the code. I'd highly recommend, if you're not already following Green, to follow Green. This is not the same person I just talked about in Reddit, but to see this plus the stuff that Green finds, um, it's always really interesting to see. And a lot of it at some point comes to fruition. So pretty cool stuff. Anyway, just wanted to bring it to you. Um, I'm going to drop the link into this post. so You can take a peek yourself, look at some of the articles that are there, but uh, really cool stuff. Good to see Tesla moving forward with some updates. We want them soon. Obviously, again, I want V11. Um, app updates are great, uh, but this looks awesome. It's nice to see some, some interesting activity happening. So enjoy and I'll see you next time.